placed. What's the word I want to use? <laughs> Hello, my name is Lee Godfrey, a registered nurse here at Skin Tight Aesthetics. Today we're going to demonstrate how we correct a malar defect or malar groove. Today what we're going to do is um, smooth out her malar, her cheek area. There's a ligament there that creates a crease. It's called the zygomatic cutaneous ligament and often it will cause that little crease in the cheek. So today what we're going to do is soften it. We have done that in the past for her. It's been a little game changer. Um, initially, about a couple years ago, I think we made the first, and it was beautiful with a little rest and lift. But today, I think I'm just gonna top it off because it's pretty much almost completely gone. And what we're gonna do today, though, is try to soften it just a little bit more. So I'm gonna use Restylane Defined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and release the ligament a little bit, and then I'll place some filler, really superficial, and then I'll layer it a little bit deeper. So we may not be using the full syringe, so what I'm doing is I'm just transferring, just in case, transferring um, her product into this syringe. I'm um, not sure how much I'll need, so I think I'm definitely going to need a half, so I'm going to transfer a half of the product and then we'll go from there. If I need more, I can pull it out. The client that would be um, a good candidate for this type of procedure would be someone that doesn't have orbital fat pads really, really protruding or the malar protrusion of the uh, soup. Uh, sometimes when that little groove is very close to the malar fat pads there, we um, can inadvertently inject some of the filler there and that can make it actually worse. So, um, I choose my clients really carefully on who would be great candidates, and she would be a good, good candidate. We can keep that mostly on. Um, a good candidate because she really doesn't have any fat pads, no protruding orbital fat pads, no protruding soup, subarbicular sacroiliac fat pad. So she's pretty flat, so she's actually a really good candidate. And we only have a little bit more to top off, and she's going to be great. That's why I'm going to use Steve you actually can still inject when someone has a soup. If you're careful, you can actually camouflage that soup by injecting into that malar groove. And um, yeah, you can you can actually, you know, they are candidates for it and just maybe camouflage it. And how I usually, you know, well stated is, listen, I can make this look better. I may not be able to correct it 100%, but I certainly can make that, you know, 50 to 80% better. The amount of product that would take to actually work that problem um, can take up to one syringe, a half on each side, to two syringes. And it really depends on how bad the deviation is or the demarcation that they have. With her, I have placed over the last year, two years, um, gotten a, about a good two syringes probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what's the biggest difference yeah. ever? Yeah, huge, right? Like, <laughs> So what I like to do is I, 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 some, I kind of create that um, demarcation with my marker so that I know where I want to go. And I will, you know, just pretty much just kind of say, oh, I know this is where that soup is. So I want to stay away from that area. Same here, you know, her demarcation is so slight now. We really almost got it 100%. But a lot of times when I lay her down, I'm going to lose that little demarcation in someone like her. So I'll mark it. And again, this is an area that I mark to just say, nope, I'm not going there. Okay. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to end up doing, is actually releasing that ligament a little bit. Um, I think we've already released it pretty good. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. she knows the feeling of that. <laughs> Because what I, I typically will do is I will release the ligament and then I will place a little product underneath and maybe a little superficial. Sometimes they used to do surgical releases of those ligaments or the tear trough. They'll do the uh, release the tear trough, I think, at the lower bluffs. I don't know what long term effects are, but my releasing for me would be just to go in there and release the connective tissue, which is collagen and elastin, right? that sometimes that little ligament gets caught in there and it can start pulling. And <clears throat> so when you release that collagen and elastin, then the ligament's freed up and it won't crease so much. 
There's another reason why we get this little um, demarcation or nasal jugal groove, they call it, um, is because sometimes when we smile, that zygomatic cutaneous ligament continues to pull this way. And as we keep smiling and smiling, it keeps pulling and pulling this way. And what happens is the collagen can start getting aligned with it. And that also can create that, that um, little demarcation. So. So I'm just releasing it a little bit. See it right there? Mm -hmm. Right there. So that's what I was just doing right now, I was just releasing it. I wasn't injecting yet. And where I place it is pretty superficial. And now I'm gonna go a little deeper, right underneath it. And a little more. We're doing okay. Get it away from the soup. Gone. <laughs> like, gone. Perfect. Can you see gone? Wow. So does it naturally just connect back? Yeah, well connected tissue does. I mean, some mm -hmm. people are just more prone to it. There's okay. people like me, I've never gotten one. So what causes it? We really don't know why that isn't. Well, I'm just lucky like that. <laughs> Guess what? God was damn fair to you. <laughs> Gave you something that you had to worry about. Just one little thing. Man, I'll tell you, this girl's... <laughs> Deep. I'm going to release it a little, okay? And the superficial, it's going to hurt a little. Wait, wait till you see her before pictures, though, because that's what you really... That looks so good. Wow. Yeah, and I do like to... I don't want to get you too puffy, though. So what do you think? I'm going to let you... Well, I trust you. You know, I always tell you whatever you think. Typically with a product like Wrestling Lift or Wrestling Define, in the Maylor area it can last 6 to 12 months, um, only because it's a non-mobile um, area, it's not as mobile. The more lower face you get, you get some more mobility and you'll metabolize the product faster, but typically this can last I mean, between 6 and I guess 8 months would be an average. It wasn't bad, honestly. I would no. say maybe four out about of four? Maybe yeah. three. Most people just, I know, you're tough. You're tough. Yeah. But most people do not like me when I'm doing that. Really? All they you see are going like, this is not fun. So all I did was all I needed to do is our point six. There's point four left. So I only used point six. So you can see that there is no demarcation though. You're pretty much, I mean, there's maybe getting some swollen right now. And she'll, she will, she'll swell up a little bit. How, how, how much is your swollen? Not, not much. Not too not much? Not bad, no. yeah. Yeah, the cannula is pretty good. Have you ever bruised there? No. Never. Yeah. <clears throat> Gorgeous. Hi everyone. Thanks again for tuning in to watch our Maylar Defect Correction Procedure here at Skin Tight Aesthetics. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also follow us on the social media that's listed below. Thanks.